Hey everybody, today I'm going to be reading the um, Facebook post by Russell M. Nelson, which was issued yesterday, president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, this is about the ongoing examples of pre police brutality and racism in the United States and elsewhere. He says, We join with many throughout this nation and around the world who are deeply saddened at recent evidences of racism and a blatant disregard for human life. We abhor the reality that some would deny others respect and the most basic of freedoms because of the color of his or her skin. Just a little background. This is the church that for over 100 years did not allow black members the full extent, the full blessings of the gospel. They weren't allowed to go into the temple to uh, receive the ordinances that Mormons believe are necessary to enter the highest levels of, of heaven. Um, black people were not allowed to be sealed to their families forever. So while the rest of the white Mormon community is like, oh, the family is the best thing. I'm going to live with my family forever. Black members were just like, uh... Yet he abhors the reality that this something like this could happen uh, in the world. Um, he, he says, we are also saddened when these assaults on human dignity lead to escalating violence and unrest. The creator of us all calls on each of us to abandon attitudes of prejudice against any group of God's children. Any of us who has prejudice toward another race needs to repent. Now this is where things get interesting. The prophet of the LDS church calling people to repentance for racism. Well, again, the church has a long history of racism, even though Joseph Smith, uh, well, he flip-flopped on just about everything in his life. And one of those was... Um, uh, abolitionism. At first, he was entirely against it. Once he ran for president later, part of his platform was um, emancipation and compensation, which is kind of, it makes sense politically, but is like also really terrible when you think about it. Like he was so concerned that Confederate uh, property owners, slave owners needed to be compensated rather than compensating the people who were literally stolen from their homelands and brought here as slaves forced to do um to to do the work that actually built the wealth for the white slave owners so yeah joseph smith mm, not a great source he also said things like i do not believe that the people of the north have any more right to say that the south shall not hold slaves than the south have to say the north shall the first mention we have of slavery is found in the Holy Bible, and so far from that prediction being averse to the mind of God, slavery remains as lasting monument of the decree of Jehovah to the shame and confusion of all who have cried out against the South in consequences of their holding the sons of Ham in servitude. Um, once he as answered a question, question 13, are the Mormons abolitionists? No, unless delivering the people from priestcraft and the priests from the power of Satan should be considered abolition. But we do not believe in setting the Negroes free. That was in the Elder's Journal, July 1838, and can be found on the Joseph Smith Papers website, as can the former. That was a uh, letter to Oliver Cowdery found in the Messenger and Advocate, Volume 3, Number 7, April 1836. Um, so yeah, Joseph Smith, pretty dicey. Brigham Young, the diciest motherfucker the church ever saw. He said, when all the other children of Adam have had the privilege of receiving the priesthood and of coming into the kingdom of God and of being redeemed from the four quarters of the earth and have received their resurrection from the dead, then it will be time enough to remove the, the curse from Cain and his posterity. And that's found in Journal of Discourses, volume two, page 142 and 143. He said, uh, you must not, this is uh, in the New York Herald, cited in Dialogue, a Journal of Mormon Thought. He says, you must not think from what I say that I am opposed to slavery. No, the Negro is damned and to serve his master till God chooses to remove the curse of Ham. He also said, um, the moment we consent to mingle with the seed of Cain through the, the moment we consent to mingle with the seed of Cain, the church must go down to destruction. We should receive the curse which has been placed upon the seed of Cain and never more be numbered with the children of Adam who are heirs to the priesthood until that curse were removed, be removed. Oh, they just go on and on. These things go on and on. Uh, why, um, why are so many of the inhabitants of the earth cursed with a skin, with a skin of blackness? It comes in consequence of their fathers rejecting the power of the holy priesthood and the law of God. They will go down to death. 
And when all the rest of the children have received their blessings in the holy priesthood, then the curse will be removed from the seed of Cain, and they will come up and possess the priesthood and receive all the blessings which we are now entitled to. Very entitled. Um, oof. Oof, this is so bad. I am as much opposed to the principle of slavery as any man in the present acceptation or usage of the term, it is abused. I am opposed to abusing that which God has decreed to take a blessing and make a curse of it. It is a great blessing to the seed of Adam to have the seed of Cain for servants. Let this church, which is called the kingdom of God on the earth, we will summons the first presidency, the twelve, the high council and bishopric, and all the elders of Israel. Suppose we summons them to appear here and here declare that it is right to mingle our seed with the race of Cain, that they shall come in here with us and be partakers with all the blessings God has given to us. On that very day and hour we should do so. The priesthood is taken from this earth and the kingdom of God leaves us to our fate. So here's kind of a tricky situation where you have a prophet of God who, you know, um, God says in the Doctrine and Covenants that whether by my own voice or the voice of my servants, it is the same. So you get this servant of God who is saying that if the church accept black people and intermingle seed, have children with black people, um, that they would immediately lose their priesthood. So is Brigham Young being a false prophet or did the church lose all its priesthood? <sighs> These quotes go on and on from Brigham Young to John Taylor. John Taylor says, For instance, the descendants of Cain cannot cast off their skin of blackness at once, and immediately, although every one of them should repent, Cain and his posterity must wear the mark which God put upon them, and his white friends may wash the race of Cain with fuller soap every day. They cannot away wash away God's mark. And after the flood, we are told that the curse that had been pronounced upon Cain was continued through Ham's wife as he married a wife of that seed. And why did it pass through the flood? Because it was necessary that the devil should have a representation upon this earth as well as God, and that man should be free agent to act for himself, and that all men might have the opportunity of receiving or rejecting truth. He's saying that the reason that black people existed, survived through the flood, is so that the devil should have a representation on the earth. So this is the prophet of the Mormon church saying this. So you can't give me that like, oh, it was a, if it's a cultural thing or some members have misunderstood. It's like, that was the prophet saying that. And this just goes on and on. Ap Apostle George F. Richards, David O. McKay. Um, oh, he says, I know of no scriptural basis for denying the priesthood to Negro other than one verse in the book of Abraham. However, I believe, as you suggest, that real reason dates back to our pre-existent life. Ooh. Oh, this is a bad one. Another prophet of the church, Joseph Fielding Smith. Not only was Cain called to suffer, but because of his wickedness, he became the father of an inferior race. A curse was placed upon him, and that curse has been continued through his lineage and must do so while time endures. They have been made to feel their inferiority and have been separated from the rest of mankind from the beginning. Wow, that was written in The Way to Perfection, page 101. Um, wow, more Joseph Fielding Smith, tons of Joseph Fielding Smith. That guy was a real piece of work. Very anti-science. Um, of Bruce R. McConkey, Marky Peterson. I think the Lord segregated the Negro, and who is man to change that segregation? Oof. Oh, we must we must not intermarry with the Negro. Why? If I were to marry a Negro woman and have children by her, my children would would be cursed as to the priesthood. Do I want my children cursed as to the priesthood? There's one drop of Negro blood in my children, as I have read to you. They receive the curse. There isn't any argument. Therefore, as to intermarriage with the Negro, is there? Apostle Marky e. Peterson. Um, Apostle N. Eldon Tanner. The church has no intention of changing its doctrine on the Negro. Throughout the history of the original Christian church, the Negro never held the priesthood. There's really nothing we can do to change this. It's just a law of God. I'm sorry, folks. This is just the way it is. We don't make the rules. This it goes on and lists of just the most racist things you can. I'm just saying some of them. Um, but it's awful. And, and enough to illustrate that it, that church racism wasn't just like a few harebrained members here and there. This was coming from the top. And then the racism that you see in the membership is has trickled down from that. The doctrine informs the culture. 
And even though that the church has done a 180 on its on its policy, barring black members from receiving the priesthood or going to the temple, they haven't solved any of this. Okay, remember, we started off talking about Russell and Nelson's uh, letter, and he urges everyone to repent. Well, on the church's own website, he lists it lists the uh, the steps, the repentance process, as some know it, the principles of repentance. We must recognize our sin. As far as I know, the church has not recognized that what it's done as a sin. If it's this great abhorrent thing, I remember uh, Gordon B. Hinckley saying when I was a teenager that a person who makes racist jokes isn't worthy of the priesthood. And it's like the church has done way worse than make racist jokes. It's made racist reality. You know, they did a little bit with those, uh, what were they called, the, the essays back on the day, but they never like officially apologized. They never did any of these steps recognizing sins, feeling sorrow for our sins. The church, as, of, as far as I'm aware, has never expressed official regret for the things that the church institutionally carried out and the official church leaders said. Never, not once. In fact, it tries to, to wash over them um, completely saying, oh, any, any of these ideas about uh, black people being unworthy in the pre-existence or whatever, those were you know just ideas and it's like, no, those were like official church teachings for a long time. So we must feel sorrow for our sins. We must forsake our sins. So yeah, turning the policy around. That was maybe the only thing that they've done. Um, we must confess our sins. Dun, 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 dun. You gotta confess it. Confessing our, sin, our sins is very important. The Lord has commanded us to confess our sin. The Lord has promised, I, the Lord, forgive sins and am merciful unto those who confess their sin with humble hearts. Well, the church, again, has never, ever confess its sins. Imagine what better impact um, Russell M. Nelson's statement would have had if he had said, I apologize for my church's racism, past and present. Leaders, my, um, my leaders said terrible, horrible things, and it was wrong. How much better of an impact versus just saying, oh, everyone else is the sinner. All you other racists out there, you need to repent and confess your sins. Us, nah, couldn't be me. And that's how like the whole country is acting. Oh, couldn't be me. I saw Remember the Titans. How could I be racist? But the next step of repentance, we must make restitution. That means you have to give back what was taken. So how would that apply in a situation where a country like, I don't know, illegally subjugated real human people. How do you make restitution for that? How do you make restitution to the people who are still suffering as a result of that? And not just because their their ancestors were slaves, but because there are still laws and practices um, in housing, in business, in all kinds of endeavors where black people are showed, um, are discriminated against merely for the color of their skin. It still happens today. They're still feeling the effects of that. Uh, racism didn't end with slavery. Now going back to Russell M. Nelson. During the Savior's earthly mission, he constantly ministered to those who were excluded, marginalized, judged, overlooked, abused, and discounted. His followers, as his followers, can we do anything less? The answer is no. We believe in freedom, kindness, and fairness for all of God's children. But do you? Let us be clear. We are brothers and sisters, each of us, the child of a loving Father in heaven. His son, the Lord Jesus Christ, invites, invites all to come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female. That's from the Book of Mormon. It behooves each of us to do whatever we can in our spheres of influence to preserve the dignity and respect of every son and daughter of God that God deserves. Well, I'm butchering this. Okay, so the, I, I consider this my invitation to do what I can in my sphere, and this is it, talking Mormonism. Uh... Because the church is, like I said, it's not just like, oh, we let black people have the priesthood, now everything's fixed. It, that's like saying, oh, slavery's ended, now everything's fixed. It's like, no, nah, there's still like huge intergenerational trauma from that and inter, intergenerational prejudice from that that's, again, really subconscious because you don't have to be like, oh, I hate black people to be racist or to be benefiting from white favoriting systems. So the church is still promoting racism. The church still uses the Bible and the Pearl of Great Price narratives, which are patently white supremacist. Why? Because, first of all, they teach that white people were created by God. And then, through sin, 
they got a skin of blackness, Cain got a skin of blackness. But we know through genetic science that uh, black skin actually came first and white skin came as a mutation way later down the line. So to say that it started out as white and then became black through trans or through sin, through murder, is straight up racist. That didn't you're turning the narrative on its head to literally make black people the bad guys. That's fucking racist. In the Book of Mormon, um, Second Nephi five twenty one, uh, the the author is talking about how the Lord divided two people in the Book of Mormon, the Nephites and the Lamanites, and speaking of the Lamanites, who Mormons still to this day teach as some of the ancestors of the Native Americans, which is already racist as fuck. He says, uh, he says, and he had caused the cursing to come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they become, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they may not, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. One more time for the people in the back that they had become like unto a flint, wherefore as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. They were white, and then the Lord made them black to make them ugly, so they wouldn't have children with white people. That's what the Book of Mormon teaches. They teach that as the origin of pigment, of skin pigment. That's so crazy and so racist. And there's still, it's still in there. President Russell M. Nelson, can't you use a little bit of your authority to maybe change some of the most bogus, horrific scripture I've ever heard? That's so insane. If the LDS church is serious about people repenting of racism, then cleanse the inner vessel first. Take out those racist scriptures. Denounce the doctrines that have been taught. Call out the specific leaders who said horrible things denounce them this is oh yeah. back to elder nelson president nelson any nation can only be as great as its people that requires citizens to cultivate a moral compass that helps them distinguish between right and wrong illegal acts such as looting defacing or destroying public or private property cannot be tolerated never has one wrong been corrected by a second wrong evil has never been resolved by more evil. Wow, everything's just good or evil. It's really that simple, folks. Nothing complex about this at all. Nothing to see here first. This is just a perfect example of white apologeticism where they're like, oh, you know, we love you very much, but don't act out. The pe people have been people have been peacefully protesting for so long. It hasn't changed anything. And actually, riots have changed things. Following the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., there were riots for weeks, and that was what helped pass the Civil Rights Act. It's because once the state feels like it's losing control, then they feel like they actually have to do something. Um, Stonewall, the Stonewall riots, you know, it's Pride Month, Stonewall riots, same thing. It helped pave the way for legal changes because the, the problems we're facing are systematic and they require legislative changes, not just fluffy words on Facebook. We need to foster our faith in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. We need to foster a fundamental respect for the human dignity of every human soul, regardless of their color, creed, or cause. And we need to work tire <laughs> Cause, yeah, right. <laughs> they, he's, he spent his whole last conference talk vilifying people who leave the church. Ugh. We need to give dignity to the cause. Blah. And we need to work tirele tirelessly to build bridges of understanding rather than creating walls of segregation. Walls, again, I may remind you, that were created by the brethren of the LDS Church themselves. I plead with us to work together for peace, for mutual respect, and for an outpouring of love for all of God's children. Well... Great wishes. I would love to see him actually do something about it. I'd love to see the, the Mormon church actually call out racism where it counts, which is in your own organization. It doesn't do any good to go around pointing, oh, you racist, you racist, if you can't recognize the predispositions that you have and the skeletons in your own closet. Well, there you have it from President Nelson. Warm wishes and no real 
change per normal. If you want to provide actual support to our brothers and sisters of color, I've included some links down below that you can go through. I know that every dollar will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.